Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you everyone, uh, everyone for coming. Uh, the topic here is today is called play, uh, play uh, with co-async. Um, uh, basically, back in January, I presented a topic called functional microservices. So one of the uh, major complaints I heard is that uh, I showed no closure code at all in that talk. So this time it's all code and no present, uh, no slides. Uh, who, know, who knows about core, core I think? I think most of you guys uh, know that. Yeah, cool. Uh, I'm aware of that. Uh, basically, this is a, a library in Clora that handles all the, uh, handles the uh, how do I put it, a asynchronous communications and this sort of stuff. Um, so the basic building block of uh, core async uh, are this, what, what do we call this, uh, uh, Go, Go blocks. Uh, Go blocks is essentially a lightweight, lightweight thread or uh, in other places called green thread or whatever. So basically, in inside the Go block, when uh, when some op operation blocks, so instead of uh, putting the entire entire uh, OS thread into sleep, you simply swap out the task and taking on some some other things to do. Yeah, this way you can have uh, multiple uh, green threads on a single OS thread, basically. Um, this uh, one central concept here uh, is called called channels. So a channel is basically a a kind of a message pump. You put you put something in uh, in one end. You take something out from the other end. Uh, that's that's the thing. Um, so basically, uh, in in the real world, in the day to day work, what I found is co I think is most useful uh, for me is that I can nicely separate it, separate my application into several layers. Uh, the first layer, the first, uh, the first layer is the business, or they call it core logic, and the whatever. whatever is that uh, you uh, hear the things you do, uh, you do some real stuff. Uh, just here you see this. This is just a simple counter, where you can receive the co command. Uh, you can just increase the counter, and then you can ask uh, what's the count now, and the, uh, um, uh, in, uh, and if the input is unknown, you can uh, give out an error. So basically. Here is that um, taking taking some taking something uh, out of this uh, this in channel, and when necessary putting something on the out channel. So this kind of business logic, uh, this kind of business logic would say, uh, here is uh, there are how do I put it? There are stream stream transformers. Basically, take a stream take a stream of something coming in, and produce a stream of something going out. So the benefit of organizing uh, the uh, business logic this way is that uh, every every piece of those are independent of, of each other, and every piece of this logic you can test them. You can test them individually. Just give them the in. Uh, just give them the two channels. Then you can just uh, send, send something in and and check w check if the things in the uh, out channel are the expected ones, and then. And then a layer, uh, a layer above this are, are the boundaries. So you can uh, you can ha the boundaries handling all the uh, input input output. Uh, like here, we're just uh, taking whatever in the stat in, uh, standard in, and uh, putting them into a channel. In this case, you don't need to think about any of the uh, any of the processing you need to do afterwards. So this part is simple. You just uh, uh, taking things from the from the input, put them in, in, put them into a channel, and the same with the same with the out one, and just taking things out of the channel and and just uh, print it, print them out. And then, once you have once you have those basic uh, basic building blocks for the application, then you can just uh, connect them together to make the to make the entire application. So here is that. Uh, uh, I'm I'm getting this I'm getting this channel that that is produced out of the standard in, and uh, and whatever sent into this out channel will be printed on, uh, to standard out. And here here I'm uh, uh, connecting uh, this uh, this channel putting uh, this channel putting into the counter, 
uh, with the one uh, that that uh, where I'm getting this uh, getting the input together or the use of pipe pipe means I can just take whatever in take whatever in this channel and send them over to, to the other one so now everything connected together I can just run this counter so they so what we can see is just this uh, just this whole application uh, I can uh, issue a command I can increase counter increase counter again then I just ask for the count yeah two and if you just uh, uh, get into uh, some rubbish you, you're going to tell me that uh, uh, this uh, error in there okay so okay how many of you still following me yeah okay questions at this at this point So, so the 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 the, uh, the, uh, the best benefit I get out of this uh, core, I think, is that I can use the channels uh, uh, as a way to separate to uh, uh, to first separate uh, different uh, different processing logic into uh, individual functions or the individual processes. So every part is a how do I say is an individual, not depending on anything else. Then you can, that can be uh, coded and tested independently. Then you use the, the facilities to connecting all those channels to, together, to form the form a whole application. Okay. Okay. If uh, that's all, I can. Uh, if no question, I go ahead to have some closer look at those channels. Okay. 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 So the, uh, so uh, so at the two end of the channel, uh, normally how it works is that uh, you have producer on uh, on one end, you have a consumer on the other end. So the producer uh, will putting things into the, into the channel, and the consumer can take things out of the channel. This this is is basically just a message. Uh, if you you can call it the message queue, the message pump, something. Yeah. So here is that the, those channels in the core I think. Uh, so the, uh, when you create a, uh, create a channel, it's a simple, just call this uh, ch uh, chan channel function. By default, the cha by default the channels are unbuff unbuffered. So uh, if you put if you put a thing in without without anything taken out, the next time you're putting something in at that point, it will uh, it will get blocked. That means if you have a faster consumer and a slow uh, so, sorry, if you have a slow consumer and a faster producer, that means the producer will be slowed down. So we can we can have a look how this thing uh, work here. So is there a way hmm. to make a buffer? Uh, yes, no, it definitely a way. Well, I'll sh show the things in a moment. So I just go for show this uh, unbuffered channel first. So let me see if I can get something out of here. Evaluation region. Come on. Let's do my level buffer. Okay. Okay, anything on there? Ah, sorry, forgot to connect to the side. Forgot to start the side. Yeah, just a moment. Yeah. Dead level. Dead level, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Ah, that's those was something else. In a moment. Okay. Ah, so here I'm run, running this. You see the uh, uh, in the consumer, it uh, it waits five seconds before taking anything out, and in the producer, uh, it's just wait one second to put the anything in. And the, as you can see here, the uh, with uh, in in case of the unbuffered for the channel, these uh, uh, this uh, consumer is slowed down. Uh, this producer is slowed down uh, by the consumer. Uh, the producer is still slowed down by the consumer, and we can put in uh, we can put in uh, a parameter called buffer. Here we can say the size of the buffer, 
uh, uh, you know, to create a fixed, uh, fixed side buffer for the channel. In this case, uh, let's see here. Yeah. As you can see, uh, all the all the things are sent into the buff sent into the channel uh, before the, before they're consumed by this consumer. The consumer is uh, slow; they take uh, five seconds for. Yeah. It, it, oh, is this? You? Oh, okay. Yeah. Five seconds. Come on. Yeah. Just. Well, yeah, okay. So this is a fixed buffer. There are also two other kind of buffer. One is called sliding buffer. Sliding buffer means that uh, if uh, you can put something in, if the producer is too too quick, the uh, the older the older elements in the buffer will get dropped. So it's called a sliding buffer. We'll see how how this thing works. So it's the same. The things things are sending sending to the uh, input channel without delay, and now we can see maybe number one or two will get dropped because the way, uh, the buffer only have the only two element uh, two space in the buffer. Yeah. So this is the lighting buffer, and sometimes uh, and also another another kind of buffer you can use called dro a dropping buffer. The dropping buffer that means when the buffer is full and the more elements come in then. The uh, the the new the new elements coming in will get dropped. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. See, it's continue sending something in. Okay, so get uh, uh, this uh, uh, this in the channel. There's always one place available, at least even without the buffer. So you see, we we got these two, uh, the the three and four are dropped because there's a dropping buffer. So we, so uh, you can give uh, you can just give it different uh, different implementation buffer, and the channel may behave differently. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what kind what kind of buffer to choose it depending on the uh, the requirement for the application. I see. Okay, this part is uh, good. Any questions on this one? No. Okay. Cool. So, so instead, uh, uh, in addition to buffers, we can apply a transducers to the uh, to the channel. That means that some of the in place uh, transform transformation of the elements can take uh, can happen when you put something into the channel. For example, we. Can say we want to increase we want to increase the number by one for every everything inside the uh, for everything inside the channel. So let's let's do it. Let's have a look at this. Yeah. So again, we're sending uh, zero to four into into the channel. Now it's received. Okay, the first one we got is one. Next one, you got two. One second, come on. Three. Come. Yes. So uh, let's see. We we send it into zero, one, two, three, four, and we got uh, one, two, three, four, five. That's because uh, we apply this transducer here. Uh, to increase uh, to increase the uh, the number by by one for everything we put in, uh, the same same thing you can do. You can you can put uh, put some put a filter put a filter in as well. You can say this odd. I say I only want to take out the element that is odd. Uh, uh, let's increase the buffer a little bit. So. Okay. Again, just the things are sent in. So now you uh, you can uh, you can see only one and three are taken out of the channel, uh, the other ones are uh, dropped or eliminated uh, by this uh, transducer. Cool. Questions here. Yeah. 
Okay, cool. Um, okay, next, uh, I think the most uh, most interesting part of this is that uh, the way that uh, how those uh, uh, how those channels can connect to each other uh, I, uh, and how and the way to connecting the channels, uh, what I see is a way of structuring the application itself. So there are quite a number of ways you can uh, put uh, put everything together. Uh, sorry, there's no, uh, there's nothing, uh, there's no uh, code here. So just a few diagrams that show show how we can how those things can be connected. So the fir first thing is a simple one, just pipe. Just have uh, two channels on the side, uh, uh, for element taken from one and and sent to another. This is called a, a simple pipe. So the pipe normally looks like this. So basically, you have a producer putting something in, then you run a pipe that uh, continuously pulling element from uh, this channel to the other one, uh, uh, then consumed by the consumer. Uh, there are several there are several uh, use cases in this one. Uh, uh, for example, some, uh, some of the sometimes is that uh, this out channel may may not be within your control and it's not buffered. And you may want to add some buffer. You may want to add some buffer to it. Then you can. Create uh, create another channel with the buffer, then then use a pipe to connect them together. Then putting things into this uh, this channel. In this case, you'll be appeared that uh, you're running something with the buffer rather than just uh, the one without the buffer. Just the one simple case. Yeah. 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 Uh, another one. Uh, another one is called uh, called uh, what's it called? It's called mod. Uh, basically, you. You can have one producer to produce something that consumed by uh, a group of consumers. Yeah, basically the the diagram is like this. So the producer putting something into the channel, and uh, there's a mod function to create a. Uh, is it? Uh, I'm not sure if the right word should be a multiplexer or something. Then uh, then you can have other channel to tap into this uh, to tap into this mod. Uh, to receive uh, to re receive the things produced uh, to receive the things that channel through this chan uh, this channel, then you got the one two three and uh, this means that everything produced everything produced put into this channel will received by all all these three receivers. Yeah, please. Uh, hmm? There is <coughs> um, mm. quite interesting relation one to many, mm -hmm. but uh, if you will send some big data. Yes. Will they receive copy, or oh, those, kind of reference? Oh, those, uh, those. Uh, I think that uh, de depending on the depending on the data, I think most of the cases you uh, because underlying the everything put in here is a Java is a Java object because Clojure runs on top of a JVM. Yes, right. So it's more likely I say more likely a a a a reference. If it's a, if it's an object or something, or or, or if you put in a, a, a integer or a primitive type, then probably the copy. It's very yeah. clean, but I mm. thought maybe it will create deep copy or something like this. Uh, have a copy. Not really. Simply just moving things uh, because the, the channel and those things themselves uh, uh, they don't care about what kind of the things you put in there. They simply receive something from here. And then just put it in, put it in uh, the th three things here. So I say, yeah, I say in the in the JVM world, it's more likely to uh, to be a reference to an object yeah. that got that got carried through. Yeah, I don't think this, I don't think it cares about the the, the deep copies or things like that. And another uh, and another set of things is called is called um, mix. Basically, this means we can uh, you can have multiple producers to produce things that are consumed by a single single consumer. Let's uh, go to the end. So it's like this. So you have uh, you have the, you have this uh, channel that uh, emitting uh, that uh, consumed by this consumer. Then you can create. You can create a mix, and and have those channels added to the mix. So when the when when anything produced by those producers, uh, then uh, sorry, anything produced by those producers will be received by this one consumer. So it's kind of the mirror of the uh, previous one. Yeah. 
And the next is called PubSub. This is, I say this is kind of the most interesting one we have. Oh, sorry. So this one, for this one is that for uh, everything produced by this producer, you can create a, uh, what they call a publication uh, uh, supplied with a topic, uh, topic function. That means every, every uh, element come in here will uh, assign a topic. Yeah. And then you can create the subscribers to those, to those topics. Uh, one common usage is that uh, here you may uh, stream in data. Uh, let's say every element is, uh, is, is something related to a specific user. Then you can say, uh, that, uh, you can say uh, those, elem those elements here are identified by their username. The username will become the topics, and then you can have the subscribers subscribe to the particular uh, users. Now let's say there may be the user one, this user two, and the user three, things like that. Yeah. So, so that's that's basically it. Questions? Cool. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, the main takeaway here is that what I got, got from here is, is a way that uh, it helps me to structure my application. So I can have the three, the three uh, layers very clearly uh, defined in, uh, in my app. The core logic, the, the boundaries. Uh, the boundaries is that where I need to talk to the outside world. It could be the, the standard in out error. It could be um, and it could be the uh, it could be socket, it could be Kafka, it could be anything, and and here it just con uh, just connecting connect have everything connected together to make the whole application, and the the biggest benefit is that every every piece of this those uh, those boundary con connecting points or the business logic here they can all independently uh, test it and uh, have their correctness very easily verified. I think that's the end of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.